Hello everybody, this is Ensign Ricky, your YouTube resident redshirt, and welcome back to the Lower Decks. And today, I'm going to be kicking off my new Ensign's Trailer Breaker series, where I will be reviewing and analyzing trailers that get dropped at places like San Diego Comic Con for content that I cover on my channel. However, in today's video, I'm going to be breaking down and discussing the two trailers that got dropped at San Diego Comic Con this year for The Expanse's Season 4. Now, I wanted to jump on the Picard trailer that got dropped at the San Diego Comic Con, but everybody jumped on that bandwagon. And when I searched around, no one really did any breakdowns on the Expanse's trailers. And plus, we got an extra clip on top of it. So, with all that out the way, let's take a dive, shall we, into the world of the Expanse. <music> mission, and it's likely one of us will be killed. The landing party will consist of myself, Mr. Spock, Dr. McCoy, and Ensign Ricky. Ah, oh, crap. Now, what is The Expanse, you ask? Well, the short answer is, The Expanse is a novel series that eventually became a television series. The series itself was written by two authors, Ty Frank and Daniel Abraham. However, they published the entire series under the surname James S.A. Corey. As it stands right now, there are currently only eight main books in the Expanse novel series, with the book nine on the horizon next year. Now, they haven't given us the name for book nine yet, but they said that this will be the last book in the Expanse series. So after book nine, the story ends. However, in between the main books, we have little sub books that they have dubbed novellas. And these are just short stories, not nearly the length of one of the main books, but they add a little character backstory, a little lore to the world, and each, some of these books are actually really good on their own right. Now, the book series started in 2011 when Ty Frank and Daniel Abraham, along with help from Game of Thrones creator George R.R. R. Martin, penned the first novel, Leviathan Wakes. Leviathan Wakes turned out to be a huge critical success for both authors and won them a couple of awards. Now, for the television show, we skip ahead to 2014. Sci-Fi, yes, the Sci-Fi channel, decided the book series was doing so well that they wanted to produce a television series for it. And naturally, the authors accepted the deal. Now, for help in producing the show, they turned to none other than Star Trek alumni, Noreen Shankar. Now, for you guys that don't know who Noreen Shankar is, Noreen came into Star Trek around the TNG era as a science consultant. He was the guy they went to for all the science dialogue, or if something could do something and something couldn't. Noreen was the man. But eventually, Noreen became a writer and a producer for Star Trek. And for you Farscape fans out there, Noreen Shankar was also the executive producer for Farscape Season 1 and Season 2. So, with Ty, Daniel, and Noreen, the production on the show would begin. Needless to say, Season 1 turned out to be a critical success among fans and critics. So much, in fact, that it got a Season 2. But Season 2 came, and the ratings didn't do as good as Season 1. So this started to put the worry factor into the sci-fi channel. But it did get a Season 3. However, when Season 3 came around, the ratings slipped even more, and sci-fi ultimately canceled the show. So Season 3 would be the last time we would see The Expanse on the sci-fi channel. Now, after the Sci-Fi Channel had cancelled the show in its third season, the show itself sat in limbo for a couple months. Then something amazing happened. The fans were outraged, completely outraged that Sci-Fi had cancelled the show. They rallied up around the show and created a movement, Save the Expanse, and ultimately, they saved the show. Now, this is not the first time we've seen something like this. Back in the 1960s, NBC also was threatening to cancel Star Trek in its second season. The fans rallied up, started a huge letter campaign, sent a million letters into NBC to save Star Trek. NBC caved. Well, in this case, the Expanse fans won because the show was ultimately saved by Amazon. It turns out that Amazon head executive Jeff Bezos happened to be a huge fan of the show and saved it and he gave it a season four thank you because this show really did need to continue 
And this is where we stand now, with seasons four and five on the way. Now, before we head into these trailer breakdowns, I want to say a few things first. First off, like most adaptions from novel to TV and film, things are going to slightly differ from books to show. Now, this is not in a bad way, like a Lord of the Rings we leave complete events and characters out of the film type of way, but sometimes The Expanse takes a different road to get to the same place. Fundamentally, nothing in the story changes, it's just sometimes they take a different path. And this is not a bad thing, especially for people who have read the books like myself. Look, I've read all the books. I know where the story is going to go. I know where the story is so far. I know what's going to happen. But since the show and the books slightly differ, and not in a major way, but small little differences here and there, make it almost like a fresh story for me. Sometimes I don't know what's going to happen. It's like a different take on the same story. And this is the reason I think they do it, because sometimes maybe they've wanted to do something in the book that they didn't get a chance to do. And the TV show is a platform where they can do that. And I am completely 100% on board with it because, like I said, I've read the books. I know what's going to come. And not knowing what's going to come is a little bit exciting for me. But there's a couple other reasons why this had to happen. One of those reasons is because The Expanse has a lot of one-off characters. Characters that only appear in the book that they're in. Not saying that they're not great characters because the writers do write great characters in The Expanse. But that's the only book they appear in. So instead of hiring an actor to play one small part for a season, which pretty much right now the show is kind of like a season book format, or giving current actors too less screen time, some actors will take other parts that were in the book. And in one such instance, one of my favorite characters in the book, Carlos de Baca, aka Bull from Abaddon's Gate, did appear in the TV show. And this is probably one of the cases where I was kind of sad. Bull was one of my favorite characters in the book, but in the TV show in season three, I think Drummer got his part, or they kind of forged his part into a couple of different actors. But I missed Bull, and that's one of the things from book to show that kind of makes me sad. And finally, before we head into the trailer, do yourself a favor. If you have not read the book series, read the book series. The book series is phenomenal. And the last book that just came out, Tiamat's Wrath, had me on the edge of my seat. It was great. I can't even describe how I felt. The, the only time I feel like this reading book is when I read books by my favorite author, R.A. Salvatore, Q. Drist, who writes all the Drist novels, which is a D&D Forgotten Realms setting. But Drist is probably my favorite hero of literature ever. And I implore anybody who wants a good hero who is well written and has 30 books behind them, 30 books, they want something new outside of like a sci-fi realm, but more of a fantasy realm, give R.A. Salvatore and Drist a look because it's amazing. And the Expanse series, read the books. It makes the show so much better. It gives you so much more backstory that wasn't there before. But now that I've read all the books, the show is much more fun to watch because now I get to see how they change it up. And I implore anybody, anybody, before they watch the show, read or audiobook it. I audiobooked this series probably twice already. And uh, you're in for a great ride if you do. But I advise you, before you get into the show, please read the books because it opens up so much stuff that wasn't there before. So, basically for the quick recap and how we've gotten to this point. Humanity, 200 years in the future, we finally make it out to the stars. We find a leftover piece of alien technology, which it happened to be from a long dead alien civilization. We exploit it, we manipulate it, we fight over it, lots of warfare, lots of death. We accidentally open up 1300 rings to different parts of our solar system with it. And now humanity is in this huge colonization race, going through all these rings, settling on these worlds. Some of these worlds don't have anybody on them, so there's no one to claim their rights. So basically, people are getting squatters rights as long as they get to the planet first. This causes problems, because people with legal rights come in and they want to settle. So, our story starts on one such planet, named Illus IV, otherwise known as New Terra. A group of Belters steals the ship and goes to the planet because it's rich in lithium ore and they plan to mine it and sell it. But big corporations come in and decide that the ore is theirs because they paid for the rights. This is where the story starts. So with all that said and out of the way, 
let's dive into the first trailer, actually the clip, of The Expanse. So, we open up with a beautiful shot of the Rosinante approaching Illus IV. We see that Illus IV has all the moons around it in a circle. This is very important, but not until later. Then, we get a nice beautiful shot of the Rossi system panels as Alex Kamal begins the procedure to test fire the Rossi's new railgun weapon. He sets the target, which looks like a stray asteroid, and then fires the railgun. From the outside, we see the Rossi charge up and fire the shot. This is a beautiful scene indeed. Alex then feels the kickback from the railgun firing and settles back in and smiles. He looks to the screen to see if the target asteroid was hit by the railgun shot as it begins to break apart. He then says, take that blue goo. Now a couple things catch my attention in this scene. First, I believe this little scene with Alex actually comes towards the end of season 4. This in my opinion is probably from the final episode. While everything in this clip pretty much remains pretty close to the party's first Illus landing, in Book 4 towards the end, Miller finally tells Holden that there's a piece of proto-molecule on the Rosinante, and this is what he's been using to communicate with Holden via the imaginary friend. When the book comes to a close, Holden goes back to the Rosinante and finds the leftover proto-molecule, loads it into a shell, and then fires it into Illus' parent star. Alex's dialogue here could suggest that this scene is when it happens at the end of the book 4, or respectively at the end of season 4. We still don't know, however, if they're going to conform to a book to season 4 man. For all we know, season 4 could be just half of book 4, and season 5 was already greenlit, so season 5 could be the resolution of book 4. Who knows? Well anyway, let's get on with it. Then we get a nice shot of Naomi working out on the Rosinante, probably during the 73 day trip to Illus. We also get to see the Rosie's workout monitor. Naomi was severely hurt in the last book or season during a conflict with the younger Mao sister. On the monitor, we see spots where she should be recovering from those injuries. Then we get a shot of my man Amos in the armory, checking on the guns to make sure they are ready. Then we get a nice sequence of the Rosie in orbit around Illus, ready to make its descent to the planet. I have to say that Illus looks phenomenal in this shot, everything I had hoped for. Then we head back to the Rossi for a shot of our leading man, James Holden. We start to see everyone scuffle through the crash couches and start buckling up for the landing procedure. When everyone is finally buckled up, we get this gorgeous shot of the ship as she prepares to land. The Rossi, which is now decked out with all of her new upgrades, looks absolutely beautiful. And then we head back inside the Rosinante as Alex fights to keep the ship straight for its descent. Then on the computer screens, we get our first topographical images of Illus as they head in. And then we get another picture of the strange alien runes that were left on the planet by the protomolecules builders. On a side note, this is also how I imagined it would look from the book. The Rosinante finally breaks into the atmosphere and then we get a shot of a man lying in medbay, attached to a machine. He slowly wakes up and pulls the equipment off him, grabs some stuff off the bed, and then walks out. However, I believe this is yet another shot that's unrelated to the landing clip. Even after reading the book again, just to prepare for this video, it's kind of hard to tell exactly where this scene takes place. I can't make the actor's face out really well, and it doesn't look like the actor who's playing Adolphus Murtry. So my guess here, and we will of course find out when the show finally airs, that it is Baja Merton. Of when this scene comes into the story? My guess is when Baja gets taken back to the Rossi as a prisoner, because he sure looks like he's in the Rossi's medbay. And then we head outside as the residents of New Terra see the Rossi coming through the clouds to land. This lady pictured here, in my opinion, is Baja Merton's wife, Lucia Merton. I could be wrong, but that's my guess. Then we get a shot of man looking over his shoulder as the Rossi makes the final drop to land. From the side of his face, this could be Baja Merton as well. The Rossi comes in, and the landing shot is amazing. The Rosinante finally hits the ground, and then we cut off to a shot of Naomi Nagata as the doors open into New Terra. But as soon as the door opens in front of her, the light hurts her eyes because she's a belter and has lived most of her life in the darkness of space. Her eyes adjust, and then we get a shot of the Rossi's crew as they prepare to step out onto New Terra. And then we get this quick pan of the Rosinante, and it looks really amazing. You can definitely see they put some serious work and time into this. Naomi starts to walk down the ramp, 
but she is shaky at first, trying to get a bearing on her senses. But as she looks up to the sky, she takes a small stumble to the ground. She's not used to the concept of a sky above her. She gets back to her feet and looks back at James Holden, who now is smiling at her in amazement. Now adjusted, she continues to walk down the ramp and the rest follow behind her. They all begin to look out the vast distance in front of them. Then we get a nice shot of the Rosinante behind them as James goes down to grab a handful of dirt. Then we pan out as the crew begins their adventure to New Terra. Did I mention the Rosy looks gorgeous? The alien structures are also in the far background. And then we get some nice aerial shots as the team makes its way across Illus 4 and the landscapes look phenomenal. This is exactly how a foreign world's landscape would look in my opinion. They really did do a great job with all the cinematography. The crew walks on for a bit and then we get our first shot of New Terra and the end of this clip. Now, the only thing that really gets me here out of this whole sequence of events that happened is that Alex and Naomi never leave the Rosinante in the book. They stay in orbit. They just come down to the planet to drop off hold in the Namos, but they go back up into space and have a small adventure of their own up there. This is primarily due to Alex's Martian Logi heritage, along with Naomi's Belter physique. This book really takes place in two different places throughout the whole story. In the book, Holden, Amos, Baja, Lucia, Elvi, Fayez, and Murtry are all on the planet, along with all the other RCE staff that lived through the crash at the beginning, while Alex, Naomi, and Havlock are all in orbit. Alex and Naomi are aboard the Rosinante, and Havlock stays aboard the Edward Israel with its captain. They are accompanied by a belter ship full of lithium ore named the Barba Picola. The RCE has legit claims to the lithium aboard the Barba Picola and blockades the belter ship from leaving to try and sell it. So with all four heroes on the planet, it definitely looks like the producers are taking a different approach to the story altogether with season 4. This is unless, of course, Alex and Naomi make it to the town and then decide to go back aboard the Rosinante later. Which means that even all the people who have read all the books up to this point, the show still holds some surprises for them here and there. So this should get very interesting here come December 13th. So with that trailer out the way, on to the next trailer. This trailer opens up with what I'm assuming is the Edward Israel or the Barbara Piccola in the orbit of Illus. And then we get another nice shot of the alien ruins above Illus. And then we get a nice shot of Holden and Naomi, and what I believe to be our first shot of Elvi Okoye. Elvi, who is going to play a major role in the story from here on out, comes out off a rover with both Naomi and Holden, probably driving to the alien ruins. And also, once again, I mentioned Naomi is in this shot on the surface, and this does not happen in the book. And then we get a picture of Holden touching the alien structure, but nothing special here. But then we get a shot of the ground being torn up, and this indeed does happen in the book. Then we get a shot of Alex and Holden looking at the event taking place. Again, Alex is on the surface, and he is not on the surface at any time during the book. He actually spots this event from the Rossi in orbit. And then we get a shot of our main villain in the story, the RCE security commander, Adolphus Murtry. Then we get a small shot of my favorite character in the book, Christian Avrasala. She's not in the book very much, but she always packs a punch whenever we see her. And then we get a picture of a couple ships at the gate in a scuffle, and I seriously have no idea where this takes place in the book, because almost none of the story happens near any of the gates. And then we get a picture of Ashford aboard one of the ships above the gate, and he's not even in the book at all. So they definitely have another part for him lined up in this season. And then we get a picture of Drummer aboard the Behemoth, which is now at the center of the ring space and renamed Medina Station. Drummer might be mentioned in the book somewhere towards the beginning of the book, but she plays no big part on Illus. So just like Ashford, kind of a stand-in on this season. And then we get our first shot of Bobby. Now Bobby is in the book, but she has two very small parts at the beginning and end. This also is around the time where Bobby's novella, Gods of Risk, takes place. It would be very cool if the producers took parts of Bobby's novella and applied it in the season four just to give her some screen time. 
and then we get a shot of the residents of New Terra looking like they're about to face off the Mercury and the RCE team. My guess is that the guy in the front is Coop, the leader of the Belter Resistance on New Terra. And then we get a shot of Naomi, in severe distress, entering a room and attaches herself to a machine. This could be because of her Belter heritage and dealing with the oppressive gravity. And then we get an Amos punch moment. Gotta respect that. Just respect it. And then we get a shot of one of the alien structures exploding. This indeed, again, does happen in the book. And then we cut back to a shot of Eva Sarla screaming her profanities. And this is how it should be. Thank you, Amazon. She has some of the best, if not the best, dialogue in the entire book series. But when Sci-Fi had owned and produced the series, Eva Sarla was toned down quite a lot. I am finally glad that we are going to see a better book-to-show depiction of her in Amazon's hands. Once again, thank you, Amazon. And then we get a shot of a shuttle ride gone bad. This also happens in the book, but Holden is not aboard the shuttle when it's hit, so a little change up in the plan here. And then we get a shot of Mercury pointing his gun at someone, and this does happen in the book quite a few times. And then we ended on a shot of what looks like the alien spires sending energy waves into the atmosphere. And if I had to guess where this scene takes place in the story, I would guess towards the end. So on to the third and final trailer. Some of the shots were used in both trailers, so I'll skip over these scenes. Let's begin, shall we? So this one starts out with all the ships going into the ring gates. Then we get a nice shot of the Rossi's new ship plaque as Holden screws it into place. Then we cut to a scene with a shuttle leaving a ship or a station. My guess is that this is above Earth or Mars because the planet is lit up below. It could very well be Illus later on in the story, after certain events unfold. And then we get a shot of a Land Rover heading over to the alien ruins. Then we get a shot of Holden looking at a creature of some sort between his fingers. I have a good guess of what this is, but I'm not trying to give too much away. Just know that this does happen in the book. And then we get a shot of what looks like Mars, at least I'm pretty sure it's Mars, because the next shot is of Bobby in uniform. This does happen in the book. And then we get another shot of Eversella all dressed up. And then we cut to a scene with both Drummer and Ashford, who I have stated earlier that are not in the book, but are maybe mentioned in passing in the book. If these two are indeed in the story in season 4, then we have many differences from book to show going on here. And then we get what looks like a swarm of locusts that descends down on the camp. This does not happen in the book. Swarm insects are eventually found on Illus in the book, but not like we see here. A little bit different. And then we cut to a nice stock money shot of the alien ruins at night during a lightning storm. And then we get a nice shot of Miller talking to Holden. I really do hope in season 4 that they take Proto Miller and give him the same dialogue as they had in the book. It reaches out. 13 times a second. It reaches out. And the rest, we've already covered already. Now, with all that out the way, I really can't wait till December 13th to find out how wrong or right I was in some of these scenes I covered. But I hope I didn't spoil too much for the people that didn't catch up. I tried to keep the spoilers to the minimum. And this concludes my very first Ensign's Trailer Breaker series. So, tell me, did you notice something that I didn't? Or... How excited are you for Expanses Season 4? Because I can't wait. But until next time, my name is Ensign Ricky, your YouTube resident redshirt. This is The Lower Decks, and I hope you enjoyed the show. Peace.